Harry's Wife, Part 75.12, The Fixed Rictus Grin. I make mention of Harry's wife's fixed rictus grin on numerous occasions, and this must not just cover the grin, but the smile, whether it is a cold, empty smile of smug self-satisfaction, or a pumped-up one as a consequence of fuel. The fixed rictus grin is something that is quite common with the narcissist. Essentially, we cannot smile from a position of warmth, because we have none. The cold, empty exterior of what we are means we are devoid of emotional empathy. And therefore, when we smile, it is merely a reaction to our narcissism driving our behaviours. In some instances, our smile is one which is created from the consequence of the receipt of fuel. And what you think is us displaying happiness is actually us reacting to the provision of fuel. It makes us feel powerful. The aching chasm within the narcissist recedes as a consequence of the provision of fuel. The taunts of the creature are silenced, become distant echoes as that fuel lands. And of course, the more fuel that we receive from the greater the sources, the more potent the sources in the larger amount and the more numerous of the appliances that provide it to us, then of course, the greater we feel fueled, the more powerful we are, the bigger the grin that would put the Cheshire cat to shame. Accordingly, the smile that you will often see from a narcissist is a consequence of being well fueled. And as the unease and the dread recedes for that particular narcissist, it is replaced by a smile that denotes satisfaction, superiority, the sensation of power. It might just be a little smirk that comes from the receipt of fuel, as I've explained elsewhere in the video, the narcissist smirk, or it may go all the way up to a million megawatt dazzling smile as a consequence of the receipt of massive amounts of fuel. In other instances, the grin of the narcissist is as a consequence of the narcissism selecting that as a response for the purposes of trying to control an individual and the maintenance of the facade. Our narcissism recognises that in this particular situation a smile would be appropriate. We've been complimented. Yes, we received the fuel and therefore a smile should also follow or that there should be a reassuring smile given to somebody in order to make it look like we care, that we should smile because somebody told a joke so that we fit in, that we should smile as a consequence of a particular circumstance, which enables us to appear as if we care, as if we're involved, as if we find it humorous, to make it enable us to fit in, and of course with mid-range narcissists greater and ultra for the preservation and continuation of the facade. The smile, of course, is entirely manufactured. It isn't generated by emotional empathy. It isn't generated by compassion or caring or warmth or delight or joy or happiness. Those things are alien to us. Instead, the smile is a product of our narcissism in the same way as we might a mid-range, a middle mid-range type B narcissist would turn on the waterworks not crying for anybody else, but themselves. And the narcissism through the imitation game allows us to utilize that for the purposes of the prime aims. Often, of course, where you have a less evolved narcissist, the grin appears at inopportune times. So for instance, we might grin as a consequence of the receipt of fuel because you're crying your eyes out as a consequence of us insulting you. And our narcissism can't keep it off our faces because the sensation of power is too great that we end up grinning. It's similar in the way that certain narcissists get an erection as a consequence of individuals crying. It's linked to the provision of that fuel and the way that it makes the narcissist feel powerful. Therefore, in certain instances, we will smile even though it's entirely inappropriate. We will smile as a consequence of thought fuel. Perhaps we've thought about the inadequacies of the person stood next to us, 
or we've witnessed the downfall of somebody that has made us look better, and therefore in our minds we receive a dollop of thought fuel that causes a response. In other instances, the narcissism drives us to create that grin, but it isn't appropriate to the circumstances and it stands out. And because it doesn't come from a position of warmth, with lesser and mid-range narcissists, it will appear sometimes reptilian, entirely forced, looking like a predator staring at its prey. It doesn't fit. It's unnatural, waxwork-like. And that's because it isn't natural. It's being forced by the narcissism. With the greater and the ultra, we are more practised at doing it. We have effectively learned to smile far more often in ways which become more convincing. But even with us, you will notice the cold, dead, predatory stare. The mouth smiles, but the eyes do not. Of course, where we do that, that's entirely intentional to ensure that you realise that whilst we're giving you a smile, our eyes tell you something different. It's designed to intimidate and provoke. But with lesser and mid-range narcissists, they will invariably have that fixed rictus grin or that smarmy smile, the smirk, the various derivations of the smile as a consequence of the receipt of fuel and or the imposition of that smile as a consequence of the need to fit in, the need to assert control. And it often looks forced, incongruous and out of place. And to demonstrate this, I have selected a number of instances where we see Harry's wife smile, and I will give you a short analysis of each one to increase your understanding. Of course, I have touched on this elsewhere in some other photo analyses, but this dedication is to the appearance of her smile in a section of its own. So, ears pinned back, ready to learn knock, knowledge, good, let us begin. The first photograph is taken from a ceremony within a religious building and we see Prince William looking pensive, ditto Harry. Out of shot is Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, who is looking particularly solemn in the wider lens version of this photograph. And I've seen a number of versions of this and throughout Harry, Prince William, the Duchess of Cambridge and other people seen in the background are solemn, almost looking downcast. But then, who is it who's grinning away like a lunatic? Oh yes, there, Harry's wife, eyes beady and staring, mouth fixed. Perhaps she's witnessed a choir boy burn himself on a candle, or maybe an elderly vicar who's tripped over and fallen down, thus amusing herself as a consequence of feeling her own superiority to the mishap endured by that individual. It's unclear what it actually is that has caused her to break out with that fixed grin, but what you can understand is that it is as a consequence of a receipt of fuel in some form, undoubtedly in her own mind, and of course her narcissism is not able to keep the quite clearly ridiculous grin under wraps amongst this solemn occasion. She is the only one that's grinning away. It's out of place. It looks manic because it's fixed. It's there. Cross her face, the toothy smile, in inappropriate circumstances. You can see that there's no warmth emanating from it. And it's clearly a smile which is denoting a form of delight, although we don't truly experience that, at somebody else's misfortune. Our second picture shows Harry and Harry's wife in an open carriage. Harry in military uniform, again, steely-eyed gaze, maybe not that of the dealer of death, but nevertheless a steely-eyed gaze remaining pensive and at least solemn on the occasion. Meanwhile, look who's there as the cat that got the cream. Yes, Harry's wife. Here, we see that the eyes radiate no warmth. Indeed, it's a look of superiority. A smug look across her face, again fixed. This is a consequence, undoubtedly, of the receipt of fuel. People will be looking her way as the carriage makes its way along the relevant procession. People are looking, perhaps clapping, perhaps cheering. 
and therefore she is well fueled, and unable to smile with genuine radiant warmth, unable to smile in a way which is appreciative. She cannot help but appear smug and self-satisfied. This is because her narcissism hasn't evolved sufficiently to portray a genuine warmth smile at all, or the equivalent of one. Instead, it shows. You can see in the eyes the satisfaction. I'm here. I'm important. You're all the proles looking at me. That's right. Bend down and kiss my pinky ring. The smile is there once again. No warmth. Merely smoke. Self-satisfaction as a consequence of the receipt of fuel. Our third photograph. We're back to the carriage. But it's, of course, the wedding day. And there's Harry, dressed up in his RAF uniform, looking out to the right, and eyes fixed and locked on the camera. We again see the forced expression. It's unnatural, waxwork-like. Again, there is the huge receipt of fuel. All these people are here to see me. I am the centre of the universe. There is no, of course, genuine enjoyment of the occasion, but rather the feeling of satisfaction and power as a consequence of the receipt of fuel from thousands of tertiary sources. Cheering, waving, clapping, smiling, all that positive fuel cascading towards her. Yes, the potency is very low because they're tertiary sources. The amount is huge because it's many people all in one place at one time. And the frequency is sustained as the carriage goes along the relevant route with all of the well-wishers looking on. As a consequence of this, rather than appear with a look of genuine warmth and appreciation for people taking time out to wish her well, we see, once again, the unnatural response, but one that's driven by fuel. The inability to smile in a genuine way writ large across her face. The eyes are almost suspicious still, and the smile is unusual. It's half fixed as if it's part way through. Again, there's a degree of satisfaction that emanates from this, a sense of superiority, and it's understandable. All those people have turned up for her. Her. Me. Me. The most important person in the universe. Validation is provided by all of those people what the narcissist craved by way of control and fuel, although, of course, remember, she does not know this. And another example of the smoke self-satisfaction that arises with the provision of large amounts of fuel. Photograph number four, another fixed grin. Here, eyes staring straight into the camera, no warmth exhibited, and whilst it's not quite the fixed rictus grin, as the teeth are not on display, it's getting there. That, once again, forced smile that occurs. Here, this is likely as a consequence of facade management, the narcissism selecting this to appear to the outside world to be normal and to fit in, to be one of all of you. What one can see that with the eyes, no warmth emanates from them. Fixed, staring ahead. At that juncture, there may not be any actual thoughts occurring. Simply, that she is instructed by the narcissism to smile and therefore does so instinctively. She doesn't think to herself, oh, I better smile here. It happens very quickly for reasons that I have elucidated in an earlier section of part 75. But once again, we see the formation of that fixed grin as part of the imitation game. Our next photograph is one that's been seen many times elsewhere. Prince Harry is looking forward, either waiting to speak or perhaps listening to somebody, and as she often does, Harry's wife manages to catch the camera directly. And in that moment, we see that there is once again that self-satisfaction with her position at that moment. The eyes are telling us nothing. It's a fixed look. They're not radiating with warmth, but instead... What we do see is the slightest of smirks. That look is actually telling you all, he's mine, I've got him. She isn't actually thinking that at that moment. 
because her narcissism will not allow her to think in such terms. But instead, that is what is actually going on in the unconscious, that she's telling the world, I'm in control here. I'm numero uno. I have got him under my control. Look at me. And thus, with those thoughts of self-importance that are going on, her narcissism isn't able to actually prevent her from allowing the slightest of smirks to appear. Her narcissism isn't able to disguise that and keep it under wraps. And instead, there is that cold, steady gaze of an individual that is entirely satisfied with their lot in life at that juncture. Though, of course, in the next instant it can change because of a threat to control. But at that moment, she's reigning. She governs. Fuel has been received. Control has been obtained. And the narcissism again fails to keep what's really going on under wraps by allowing you a glimpse into the self-satisfied smirk of an individual that has control at that instant and that her primary prey stood right next to her is putty in her hand. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.